Hey everybody, welcome to another Energy Ask Life interview. This week I'm here with Gareth Edwards. Um, now we've been working with Gareth for a little while now. Gareth, in our mind, is an absolute genius. He's um, an incredibly clever guy. He's uh, one of the UK's most qualified uh, blood microscopists. He's an extremely uh, experienced and talented nutritionist, and he's an all round good guy. Um, <laughs> what can I say, Ross? What an introduction. That, that, that is so much. Introduction, but we did. <laughs> now we've just started building even more of a relationship with Gareth um, through Energize for Life, so you're actually going to be hearing a lot more from him. Um, he's going to be guest posting on the blog and he's going to be available to answer some of your questions as well, but more about that later. Um, to begin with, Gareth, if you could give us a little bit of a background of yourself, um, how you came to be interested in um, natural health and nutrition, and then, of course, the microscopy. Mm, sure, of course. Well, once again, thanks very much for that introduction. And uh, just before I start, Energize for Life, great company, and I'm really excited to be involved with them. Really, really um, ingenuitive and, and dynamic. Very exciting company. Um, in terms of my own experience, I I suppose it all started when I was about 21, and I, and I got very sick. Um, I'd been taking antibiotics every day for two to three years um, for acne and uh, a series of events occurred and, and I had a bit of a kind of crash, you know, I mean it was, it, it, my health just sort of fell out from underneath me um, and uh, various facts involved. So and, and a major part of my route to uh, return to health was changing my diet. So when I was 21, I, somebody gave me a copy of Le, uh, Leslie Kenton's Raw Energy um, and I started doing that with a friend of mine and I, I just could not believe what was going on. I mean, I combined it with some yoga. I was living in a yoga teacher's house at the time um, and, and suddenly, you know, my body started to move and shift and change in a way that, that it never had done before. Um, and, and I was studying at the time and, and, I, and I just found myself getting far more interested in diet and nutrition and thought, wow, this is what I'd like to do. One day I'd like to be a nutrition consultant. But uh, I'm 46 now, so that was 25 years ago. It, it, it wasn't really a very viable career opportunity then. Um, well, whatever. And, and so I then, I then and, and I had so much more energy that, that I, you know, and, and was so much more into sport that I, I thought, well, what I'd really like to do right now is, is go sailing because that was, you know, I, I loved it and, and I just went away and I was competing uh, as a sportsman and it wasn't until um, 15 years later and three sort of failed attempts at my pinnacle sporting goals that I thought, well, actually, you know, what I've always really wanted to do is study to be a nutrition consultant. So I went to the Institute for Optimum Nutrition, which and Patrick Holford yep. was lecturing there then. Uh, and he's very dynamic and engaging. Um, and, and I thought, wow, you know, I've got to do this. So while I was still working, I started studying. And I, and I qualified from there. Um, but, but the main challenge that I faced was... Um, Although I learned lots of really interesting scientific information, um, it, it hadn't led me down the path that I really wanted to go to, which was to start practicing as a nutritionist, helping people to make dynamic and, and uh, transformational shifts in their health with living foods. Okay. Um, there, there's a, there was a bit more of a pill focus and a, and a supplement focus, and I really believe that, that you could have an absolutely profound effect on somebody just by helping them to change their diet. And so I started to practice, but, but, I, but I didn't feel that I, I had the full toolbox I needed to really help people. Um, and so that led me, um, after some considerable head scratching and heartache, to go back to university at 39. And, and do some more studying. So with a very long-suffering wife, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, got, I, I, I took that choice and, and, and it sure wasn't easy, but, yeah. but during that time at university I had some further health challenges um, and, and it was at that time that I started to get w awoken to Dr. Young's work. Um, okay. Somebody gave me a copy of uh, Sick and Tired and because I was in that um, 
a scientific environment where I was like having to study. It was very academic. Sick and Tired was a book that I could really understand. I mean, he's written other books that are far more easily digestible, but but Sick and Tired was just right where I needed to be at that time. Um, and I found myself. Uh, I burnt my leg. I, I went to Bali and I burnt it on a motorbike exhaust, and, and I found myself in hospital. Um, again, intravenous antibiotics, and I just felt this, this just wasn't the right way for me to deal with this. So yeah. uh, obviously everybody has to make their own responsible choices about their health, but for me, I felt that wasn't the way forward. So I, I, instead of that, I uh, pursued a, um, a health path based on foods. I, I, I didn't want the antibiotics, and, and I decided to heal myself using food. So, um, I'm very involved with an acupuncturist, and, and she said, you've got to start juicing greens. So, so really, that, that was, and that was, had such a huge impact on me, yeah. that, that I got my juice machine out, and I was just juicing, 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 and I, and I started to just feel better, more energised, more alert. You know, I'd gone through various different experimentations with food. And then at, at, at that stage, Ross, I just didn't have a choice. You know, I mean, I was so ill. That, that, you know, I, I, all I could do every day was just to get up, um, go to Fresh and Wild, buy some greens, put them in a juice machine, um, drink it, and then lie back down on the bed again. Okay. Um, and progressively, slowly, out of that, I, I then, you know, finished my degree, but I was on a path. Yep. Okay, and that was really the, the start of the whole health plan diet approach for you. I, I, yes, I mean, I, I, well, I think ever since I was 21, I'd, I'd been into raw foods. But you know, at 21, I, I, you know, I thought honey and carrots yeah. were really good for you. It was only really then, at sort of 41, that I, that I started to realise that that not all raw foods were that great. You know, you can have raw cheesecake and you can have yeah. raw yeah. fruit salad and you know, and eat lots of apples and bananas. But but that's probably not going to make you that well, that's probably going to promote yeast and fungus to, to develop in your body. Yeah, yeah. And, and how was, so was there quite a big uh, correlation, or was it quite a contrast between what you were learning, sort of a, a slightly more traditional nutrition course, the degree, <laughs> uh, versus what you were reading in Sick and Tired? Um, it, 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 it was very, very different, I've got to, I've got to say that. I mean, the, I, was, I was studying in an environment where scientific rigour was, was very much the order of the day, and, and you know, increasingly um, we are required to practice evidence-based medicine um, and, and to provide evidence for the practice that we, that we carry out with patients, and, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and theoretically, within the, the course, you, you know, you, you could pursue any path that you could find ev an evidential base for. But, but I would say uh, a lot of people in that environment probably thought I was a bit extreme. But, uh, but I mean, and, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, uh, what I want to do is, is do something that gets results. And I was yeah. getting results, and I wanted other people yeah, to get those results it. as well. Um, so that led you on a path directly to Dr. Young, then I understand you trained with Dr. Young. Um, how did that come about and, and how was that experience? Um, he, I started, when I was um, studying, I saw that he was running microscopy courses in America. I thought, I guess I've got to do that. You know, that, that's, that, that's kind of where this is all logically leading. Then, you know, six months after I graduated from university, he was running a course in the UK. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a big kind of stop and thing, you know, it's a big investment of cash and I, and, but, but I just kind of something I knew I had to do it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I, you know, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the most straightforward path, you know, but, but it's been 80% of my business now is, is, is doing blood testing. It's such a kind of motivational test and, and, and such a useful tool in, in encouraging people to see things from a slightly different angle. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll get on to the, the microscopy in a bit more detail in a moment. Let's um, get into the nitty-gritty of the alkaline diet, because obviously a lot of people that are watching, that's the reason they're here. 
Um, I bang on about it all the time. It'd be great to hear your perspective, perhaps a different voice on to what the alkaline diet is. Could you just, for the benefit of all of our viewers, yeah, explain sure. the basics, what is the alkaline diet? Yeah, well, I think that, that what differentiates the, the alkalizing diet I mean, I'm gonna, it's going to be a bit sort of slightly obvious here, I guess, but, but I think it's important to reiterate the, sort of the basics of this. Um, what, where it differs from other diets is, is that the focus is on the effect that the foods and the fluids that you drink and eat, uh, the other way around, uh, have on the pH of your body's fluids and, and tissue. Because, because the fluids of your body ultimately affect the tissue of your body. Yep. So, so the primary requirement is to change the fluids of your, of your body, the pH of the fluids of your body. Now, I'm hoping that you can maybe just sh show graphically on the screen here while we're talking a, a picture of a pH scale. Yep. Um, and, and basically, uh, something really acidic will burn you, and something highly, highly alkalizing w would have a kind of burning effect. So, so somewhere in the middle there's a balance, and, and the slightest shift around that balance point will, will affect your health. So it's, there are many, many factors by which we can judge the healthiness of food, uh, but, but the pH of the effect that that it has on the pH of your body is a really, really important one. Now, quite how you measure that is, is the subject of much debate, and Dr. Young has come up with a formula for giving a, a figure of, of what the acidifying effect is on your body. That, that in itself is, is the subject for a whole other discussion. Yep. But you, you can start to imagine that if you, if you eat foods like vinegar, which you know you, 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 know, you would obviously imagine that that's really acidic, um, or drink lots of beer, or, or eat lots of red meat, yeah. actually those things have a really acidifying effect on your body. Now, you, in, in addition to all of this, we are making acids all the time, so, so there is a requirement that, that we make, we, we have to do things in our diet that make us more alkaline okay. in order to keep our body fluids balanced. Okay, so what types of things create this acidity in the body? Is it just that every day walking around thinking and, and breathing or how, how does the body... Well, breathing, breathing actually um, it, it helps to balance the body generally, but, but any movement, any thought, any metabolic action that goes in your body, you know, anything other than lying on, in a catatonic torpor yep. on the floor is making your body acidic. Yep. Okay. So that's why it's so important for us to ingest alkalizing foods, foods that have an alkalizing effect on the body, to help neutralize the pH of our fluids and keep it at a slightly alkaline level. Okay, now I'm very pleased that you referred to foods that have an alkalizing effect on the body more so than just alkaline foods because I'm going to have you answer a question now so that I can use this answer because I always get asked <laughs> if we're wanting to consume alkaline foods why does Dr Young suggest that we um, squeeze lemon into our water when lemon is clearly a citric acid the most asked question of all time so if you can clear this one up for us I'd be eternally grateful to you right now Dr. Young's science is probably slightly clearer than mine on this subject, but, but what I can tell you is that the, the lemon, once it is in your body, the, 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 the minerals in it disassociate to make it alkaline. Okay, there's potassium and sodium minerals in the lemon, and the, and the, and the metabolic processes which occur once foods pass into the bloodstream mean that the alkalizing salts override the presence of the acidic, the acids that, that, that give it its sharpness when it is in your mouth. But if you take something like an orange, mm -hmm. that is acidic because, of, because the sugars override the, the mineral effect. Okay. So 
all I can tell you is that it is alkalizing, that the people who are alkalizing have no problem with lemons, but it's interesting that if somebody's got ulceration or any inflammation of their digestive tract, so before the, the, the lemon has passed into the bloodstream, quite often they find that a bit of a challenge to drink that. You know, the, the lemon is irritating to them because, it, because at that stage it's still acidic. So it's once it is associated, and in the same way, you know, people say to me, tomatoes, surely they're acidic. Well, only once when they're outside the body. The, the disassociation inside the body, the change, the shift, once they have been metabolized and become part of your blood, means that they have an alkalizing effect. So, so what you're looking at in, a, in, a, in the most conventional, when I first heard of this way, is what the ash of the field yeah. is, what, what, what the residue that is left when your body has burnt yeah, the food up. Yeah, okay. Excellent. So it is about the effects it has on the body, not what it is before you consume it. Can I show that video many, many times <laughs> in the future from now on? So many lot of writing. Um, okay, so say I've uh, come to see you today for a consultation. You've looked at my blood. You're suggesting that I begin to eat in a more alkalizing way. Where would I get started? What are the sort of say three most important things that I would that you would tell me to go away and start implementing today? Well, I always I, I, I guess this is slightly perverse, but but I, I you know I um I think I'd always start with something that people wouldn't expect. So you know, like watching a funny movie that's alkalizing. You know, yeah. uh, hanging out with your mates you know that's alkalizing. Doing things that you enjoy and bring a smile to your face. You know, I mean, I, you, I know you're a big fan of Anthony Robbins, and, and I think he's an amazing person. You know, he always just talks about changing your physiology, and once you start smiling, you just feel different. You know, it yeah. shoots off all kinds of chemicals in your body. So, you know, if all this, you know, kind of alkalizing and you know, raw food all seems a little bit daunting, just start with something simple that you really can do. That's really straightforward. Okay, so once you're smiling and having a good time and you're watching Mr. Bean or I don't know, something <laughs> funny like that. Or something, yeah. <laughs> or something funny. Yeah. Uh, 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 then, then I guess what, what Dr. Young has done to, to kind of try and make it straightforward and simple to get into this mm -hmm. is he's developed these green powder products. Yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, and he himself says, you know, people come to me, oh, Dr. Young, it's too hard, you know, you know, I don't want getting the juice machine out, you know, going and buying all those fresh greens in the market, you know, it's just too hard. So, Energize for Life, sell these green products, which, you know, it, it's just like a food supplement that you can get on the run that's quick, that's easy. You know, I was up at seven o'clock this morning, I haven't had time for breakfast yet this morning, I'm a nutritionist. All I've done is drink green powder. It's a food supplement. Powdered up green vegetables, grasses, herbs. Very clever what Dr. Young has done in his products, that he's reattached a microelectronic charge to them that gives it some of the energetic feels that fresh vegetables would have. And uh, then you put some drops in it which alkalize the water and together you drink that powder and you start to change the fluids of your body. So, so that is the obvious starting point. Okay, excellent. What was laughing? All right, so I'd say that summarized laughing, greens and hydration as well being the third, the third part of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then, well, yes, and then, and then you want to start changing what you eat. I mean, you know, I mean, I sit in consultations with people, and and, I, and, I, and rather than sort of doing a kind of didactic finger wagging, give up the chocolate, give up the alcohol, give up this, you know, by the end of, you know, if you have somebody going on you like that for 15, 20 minutes, you just lose the will to live, you know. Yeah. I mean, so so don't do it like that. You, you what you want to do is start focusing on. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but but fresh food that's been grown in the ground. The more of that stuff you can get in your diet, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so um, you just touched on uh, knocking the motivation out of someone there by telling them everything they can't do uh, rather than things they can do. Yeah. Um, for people who do struggle for motivation, because it can be a massive shift for some people. I mean, I was really lucky. I was reasonably healthy anyway um, from a food point of view. I was already pretty much vegan. I was definitely vegetarian when I started. Always ate a lot of vegetables anyway, always kept well hydrated. A lot of people coming from a very, very different place than that. Um, so the alkaline approach to health can seem like such a big overhaul 
they struggle to see how they're going to stick with it. How do you keep your um, clients motivated or people that you're talking to about how plan diet? How would you suggest that they keep that motivation level up? Well, I think I think quite often focusing on what you want, you know, because you know I've got certain goals in my life at the moment, you know, as well as you know uh, providing my patients and clients with the best possible service, the best possible support. Um, I've, I've also got my own goals, you know, I've got sporting goals. Um, yep. So I think having a, having a goal that you want to achieve, and then if you start experimenting with the alkaline diet, the, the only slight challenge you might have is that you might feel rough to begin with, you know, you might feel less good. But, but if you can sort of do 10 days of it, then, then you might start to, you know, hopefully you'll start to notice that you feel better. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, I think thinking, well, you know, sitting down, focusing on what your dreams are, you know, where you want to be in your life, where you want to go, and then thinking, well, the best possible way to get there is to be, you know, as mentally alert and energised yeah. as I can possibly be. And then, and then if you find that it, that it works, then why would you do anything else? I think, yeah. I think the biggest challenge is, is the distractions then, you know, that, that, you know, your whole social group, you know, like the, 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 the you know, I, I, I think there is a level of administration involved in it, you know, you've got to go shopping more regularly and all that kind of stuff, but, but also try and surround yourself, you know, with, you know, tr- I mean, Ross gives you a great opportunity to kind of be involved with him once a week and he's your mate on the internet, you know, but, but try and get a few more of those people in your life. You know, you don't have to cut out all your other friends, but, but just try and make some connections with somebody who can go, wow, yeah, that's really, you know, who's a bit more sort of enthusiastic. Yeah. I think sometimes people get the stuffing knocked out of them when the people around them are just going, oh, I'm not eating like a blooming rabbit all the time, yeah. you know, and... and the, and you can you can still socialise. You can still go out to dinner, and there's it's, it's actually remarkably easy to eat out and still be at least seventy percent alkaline. That's yeah. that's it. And I think you're right. I think the most important thing is just to get past that first week, two weeks, and as soon as you start feeling the difference and start seeing the results, that's almost the motivation kind of snowballs then. Um, and, I, and I think that the, the other point you mentioned about sort of getting more people in your life who, who think in a similar way to you, we've actually got a, um, a message board, an online forum uh, at NGRS for Life now, I'll put the details along the bottom of the screen, where there, there are heaps of people on there who are all alkalizing, trying to alkalize, some are really advanced, some are just starting out, but it is it's a great place you can go to just sort of meet people who are on a similar journey, ask questions, and, and we're always hanging out on there and answering your questions as well. So um, yeah, do check that out because I think it's it is important to have that sort of support of people that, that have got that similar interest. Definitely. Um, now we, we did just talk about supplementation. We just talked about the green powders and the the drops, the pH drops. Is there anything else you'd recommend as a as a sort of staple? I mean, I know we both have similar uh, approach to supplementation in that getting nutrients from the plant source is the best, from the actual food from the ground is best. There are supplements that are still important and still play a role. Are there any further, apart from the greens and the pH drops, that you sort of recommend as a, as a kind of staple? Um, I, I think that's the staple. You know, I, I think uh, with quite a lot of my clients, I do encourage them to use the full salts as well. Okay. Um, I think what basically what full salts are is it's it's sodium bicarbonate but, but but with other minerals in bicarbonate forms that, that can be that are beneficial. So it's sodium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate, magnesium bicarbonate and uh, calcium bicarbonate. Um, now y- your body needs those bicarbonate minerals and, 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 and if you just mix them in a glass and stick a bit of pH paper in it, it's really alkalizing. I mean, the only thing I'd say is it's it's strongly alkalizing. So you you would maybe want to go a little bit cautious with with drinking them. Um, you know, if you experience any kind of headaches or any kind of noticeable side effects that you felt uneasy about, then then you might want to kind of 
reduce your intake. But but generally, uh, you know, having said that, people drink them and, and drink progressively more of it and just feel better and better. But it is a strongly alkalizing agent. So so just just be aware as you start to use it. But but I but I would recommend it. I mean, there was apparently a guy on Radio Four um, a, a week or two ago who had overcome some fairly serious kidney uh, disorder, you know, to, which was perceived as miraculous mm -hmm. through using sodium bicarbonate. Yeah, yeah. I think Dr. Young sent out a, a uh, email, email that, yeah, yeah. I'll put the link for that on the bottom of the screen as well. So, so and, and there's a, well, he's, he is a controversial uh, oncologist, but a guy called Dr. Tullio Simoncini um, in um, Italy who is using uh, sodium bicarbonate to treat cancer patients. Uh, the Hippocrates Institute in Florida, uh, run by Brian Clement, where they you know educate people about living food and health lifestyles and how people achieve miraculous health transformations. Yeah. They're now starting to use sodium bicarbonate in some of their IV infusions. I think, yeah. it, you know, I think one and I've you know I've had patients who have come. I had one girl who was a personal trainer, um, and she, I mean, she didn't actually use the four salts. She just went away and said whenever she's feeling a little bit low in energy, she just buys some sodium bicarbonate off the shelf at the supermarket and uses it. I mean, Dr. Young, I think, rightly points out that, that there can be some impurities in, in yeah, just regular Yeah, definitely be careful offer. with uh, sleep and stuff. I, I know there are quite a few brands out there that are brilliant. There are some that um, do contain aluminium as well and anti-caking agents, so just definitely be careful, but, but do have a look, because there are some out there and they are very cheap. So. Um, I think the, the benefits Dr. Young talks about with four salts is the, the calcium, the magnesium and the potassium. potassium do also have extra alkalizing benefits, do have different benefits as well. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I agree it's fantastic products and, uh, and, and to, your, to your point just earlier before, I think with all supplements it, it's always sensible. You just listen to your body, your body tells you if something's right or wrong and that's no different with the four salts if you started to feel you know, bloating or anything that you, you that obviously wasn't agreeing with you, you just take your dosage down a little and, and you can build up slowly. I mean, we recommend that with the greens and I, I know you do as well to sort of have a build up slowly. I think, I think quite often, you know, if, if you feel, start to feel sick when you're using supplements, you know, <laughs> might, might be obvious, but look at what you're eating because quite often, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of, you know, if you're still drinking lots of coffee, drinking lots of alcohol, yeah. eating lots of chocolate, you know, eating lots of meat, lots of fish, lots of cheese, and, and you're taking these supplements, you're going to probably start feeling a bit sick because, you know, you're, you're starting to alkalize your body, but, it, but, but you're ingesting lots of acid, so there's going to be some kind of reaction here, or lots of acid-forming foods. So, uh, and, and just remember that, that the supplements are... Uh, are supplements, yeah. yeah? Okay, the core here, you know, what I'm trying, really trying to do with people when they come and see me is whatever small, however small, however incremental they can do it, is to change their diet and then to use the supplements to support that. Yeah. It, it's not an alternative, really. Um, it's, it's, it's best, you know, it can help, it can assist you on your way, it can help to make the rebalance, but, but the focus wants to be, you know, around the food and diet if you can. And, as much as possible, raw food. I know you're yeah. a big, big fan of uh, eating raw. Um, mm -hmm. There are probably a lot of misconceptions out there about what eating raw means. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that approach to health? Um, and, and how people can really get started. I mean, I know it's sort of, it's inbuilt to the alkaline diet to some degree, but um, tell me a bit more about the benefits of raw food. Mm. Well, I think that, um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's controversial to say, you know, you, you need to have some fresh raw vegetables in your diet. You know, I mean, to, 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 to try and elucidate a healthy diet without any salads in it, well, I, I think that would be anathematic to, to most people. You know, it'd be like, well, yeah, okay, I get it. I, you know, fresh raw vegetables is not controversial, are perceived as healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now to be a raw foodist is a, is a little bit something else. You know, I mean, the, the, it's I'm going to maybe upset some people here, but but it can get a little bit cultish. You know, you, you start getting obsessed with well, is it raw or not, rather than kind of you know, is it healthy or not? You know. You, uh, 
I, we, everybody knows about this fruit thing, you know, you can really OD on lots of sweet sugar fruits. And if, if raw is your principal criteria, well, you might be better off with a bowl of, you know, pasta and tofu that, that's got a low glycemic index, a low sugar index, mm -hmm. than eating lots of bananas. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like to make that distinction. Then, then there's the, so, so yes, but, but, but I absolutely do think that the more raw food you can eat, the better. Yeah. Um, some people are going to say, well, I really struggle with raw food, what about the winter, all that kind of thing. That, that raw food has a different energetic quality to it. That, that, that you know, there, there's just no two ways about it. Now, how do you, and, and it's that energetic quality that is what makes it important and what differentiates it. Okay, now, Question mark, how do you measure the energetic quality of food? Well, it's not something that in conventional environments is looked at that closely. It's not, um, you know, you know there, there isn't a, a measure specifically of energetic quality. So there, there's a really controversial way that you can do it. Well, really controversial. Some people perceive it to be controversial is, is to use curly in photography and you see energetic fields. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, we can show you some pictures there which, which show raw cabbage versus cooked cabbage and you just see a different glow around it. Mm -hmm. um, the, there is also, there is an alkalizing effect of, of raw food because it because it's really rich in electrons. What gives it that energetic field is that it's packed with electrons. Now electrons are really alkalizing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it's fresh, when it's raw, when it's just been picked out of the ground, it will at a micro electronic level have an alkalizing effect on your body. Yeah. So and I think and I think also there's this like um, scientific evidence. I mean I remember when I first read that raw energy book that I alluded to yeah. um, that they did some research and they showed that, that, um, that there's leukocyte release, that there's white blood cell release in your body when you eat cooked foods. So, you know, and, and that doesn't, or there's much less of that when, when you eat raw foods. Um, cooked foods have a higher glycemic index as well. The, 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 the sugars start to be released when you cook it and they start to break down. So, so lower sugar, energetic value. Um, I'll have to think about it a bit more, but for me, that's kind of good enough, and it, and it works. Yeah. Just yeah. try it, you know. Don't, don't, you know. But, but, it, but you need variety, you know. Just endless lettuce, 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 and tomatoes. That, that's never going to cut it. You're, you're just going to get bored and, and give up and go and eat fish fingers. I mean, you know, you're, yeah. you, you, you've got a kale, chard, chicory, sprouts. You know, lots of variety, and 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 make it interesting. Get creative. Yes, yeah. it's, it's fun. But when you're alkalizing, of course, you have juices, all raw, yeah. smoothies, all raw. Mm. Soups. There's a lot of raw soups that are absolutely delicious. There's heaps on the blog, um, and uh, the salads, obviously. Um, if I wanted to cook a nice, I mean, we came over here for a raw meal the other week. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, what? Give us an example of a raw food. dinner. Yeah. Um, What's like your favourite meal? Uh, well, my wife, I mean, if, if, if we were going gourmet, my wife, I mean, I think she did it when, when you guys came around. She did a gazpacho to start with, yeah. so that was the, like raw tomato soup um, and some uh, crudite, you know, celery sticks, and, and you can make raw hummus to go with it. So instead of um, heating, the, instead of cooking the chickpeas, I mean, you've got to remember that some uh, hummuses are made with tinned chickpeas, and yeah. tinned, not much life force, not much energy going on yeah. there. So instead you sprout the chickpeas, then you blend them with tahini, you can get raw tahinis as well, yep. um, and lemon juice and black pepper and salt. Uh, and so you make a dip, so raw hummus, um, dip your carrot sticks in that, then have a, a gazpacho. And then your main course, well, I'm trying to remember what we had. Um, uh, Ruth, I mean, you know, you can do amazing things with layers of spinach and fill that up with again with sprouted chickpeas, with sprouted lentils, um, and then big salads. You know, with something really chunky that, that feels like it's got substance to it. So kale leaves. Um, put some sprouts in there. Have some nice dressings. Have some nice dips. Yeah. Um, the avocado dip we had. I'm gonna have to get that recipe. That was unbelievable. <laughs> um, but it was absolutely delicious. I mean, we all left there feeling so satisfied in our stomachs and so happy and so craving all of those recipes. Um, it re really was a very, very delicious meal. Um, so yeah, I think, um, like I said, alkalizing tends to lead you down the path of being raw quite a lot of the time anyway. And if you can just throw in 
an extra two or three meals a week on top of that anyway that are predominantly raw, I think you're probably on a pretty good path. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, you know, just, just whatever it is you want to have, you know, I mean, ha have a big raw salad, you know, that, that becomes your focus as you move into this, and then you, the, the other things that you're used to being the focus become the side dish. So if you, yeah. you know, if you want to eat some fish, I mean, I'm, I'm not particularly a big advocate of eating fish, but if that's what you've got to have to get through this, then then you know, have that as a side dish. Or you know, there are some good, good toffee products. I know it's sort of slightly controversial, but I, but you know, I I think in a way that's preferable to some of the other choices. Um, tofu sausages, you know, with a big salad. Yeah. Um, but but make the salad interesting. Um, let's get on to the microscopy. Yeah. Um, you've been doing live blood analysis for a while now. For those guys out there who don't know a great deal about it, can you give us an introduction? What is live blood analysis and how does it all work? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, you know, I, I get people coming to see me who have been to see their doctor. They've had all kinds of blood tests. They say, why would I need a blood, another blood test? What, what live blood analysis does for you and, and this is the equipment that we use as a microscope and, and you see images of your blood directly on the computer screen. It's a, it's a really, really dynamic test and, and highly motivating, which is, you know, what, what part of it, you know, the reason why I would recommend it. Um, you, you see your blood in, in a very different way from any other test. You know, if, if you go to the doctor and ask for a full blood count, which is really, which is really useful information, it's, it's really important um, and valid information, what they do in that test is, is they count things. So they take your blood, they dry it, they stain it, and different things in your blood stain different colours. And then they use a, you know, a computer to count the numbers of things that have stained that colour in the blood. As I am, as, as I'm, you know, you, you, you would see if you asked a doctor. So, um, th that information is, is important and useful. If, if, for example, if your hemoglobin levels are low, you, you, you know, by increasing your intake of greens, you can probably lift them, uh, you know, with some salt as well, probably. So, you, um, but the challenge with that test is that sometimes people go to the, see the doctor, they have that test done, they're not feeling well, and everything comes back normal. And the doctor, unfortunately, can't, you know, he, he's faced with a slight challenge, you know, he might have some insights, you know, he might be aware that, that things aren't going well in their family life or something like that, but, but there's nothing really from the blood test that he can pinpoint that says, you know, it's clearly this. Now, with a live blood test, you you're looking at the quality of the of the blood. So, so if your blood cells are ruptured, if they've got um, yeast growing inside them, if they're um, compressed, which would show that you're dehydrated, if they're all stacked together, um, if there are forms in the plasma which aren't picked up by the calculating numerative test, then we've got something that I can show you or that any microscopist can show you and you can say the, you know, this is the nutritional strategy that if you follow, it should help you to move back towards what is a healthy picture. I will show you a healthy picture. So, that, that in, it, and in addition to that, it's really, really motivating because, you know, it's not like you go and you do the test and then you get the results and they come back. And, you know, you've got the results there, live in front of you on the computer screen. It's kind of in your face, you know, and, and when I first did it, you know, it's just like, God, I, you know, I've got to keep on this, I've got to keep doing this, because, you know, I can see that what I'm doing isn't quite right yet. Um, and there's, there's, so really dynamic, really exciting, I've yet to sit in a room with somebody and, and do it for them and, and then be anything other than blown away, really. Yeah. I mean, because it's so different from anything else that, that you experience. I mean, people are a little bit scared, they're a little bit apprehensive, you know, what are they going to see? But I generally try to say to people, it's, it is a test of optimism and hope. You know, whatever we see there, there should be a nutritional strategy, an emotional strategy, a lifestyle strategy, you know, something that you can do that should bring about the balance. Yeah, and it's the first step yeah. in the right direction, basically. So what happens if I were to come for a consultation? What would happen? Where would we start? Okay. Um, well... 
I first of all, I'd, I'd want to get some background information. You know, that that's that, that uh, I'm a member of the British Association of well, Nutritional Therapists. It's called something slightly different from that now. Um, and uh, you know, the, we you know, it, it's a requirement of, of my nutritional practice that that, that I understand your full medical history. Um, that, that I, you know, kind of understand your lifestyle choices, you know, I, I think that, so I'd like, I'd normally, you know, I'd, I'd very much like to spend just a little bit of time just, just understanding what factors are affecting your health. Then we do the test, and, and the test falls into two parts, so I've described to you a little bit about live blood analysis, but live blood is very immediate, so, you know, um, what, what, whatever you have for breakfast or lunch or, you know, would, would affect the blood, and if you yeah. hadn't had it, it, would, it, that would affect the live blood. So in order to support that and to give us an even more um, elucidating picture, we let the blood, we also, and, and this is all just from tiny drops of blood on the tip of your finger, there's no blood draw, there's no, you know, kind of anything like that, it's just tiny, tiny little pinprick on the tip of your finger and tiny drops. So, so the first, I, I use four drops, the first two drops are, are live blood samples, the second two drops are dried blood samples, and we let the blood dry on the tip of your finger for 45 seconds, and then during that drying process, heavy elements are sinking to the bottom of that drop, lighter elements are floating out okay. to the top, okay? And then, and then we touch the, the slide down seven or eight times on that dry blood drop, and then we leave it while we're looking at the live blood, and during that... Um, process during that time the dried blood is continuing to dry yeah. and and then patterns form in those dried blood drops we and, and as we start to look down the microscope and look at them we can see patterns form in those circles on them on the slide and the, the location of disruptions in that tight mat which your blood should form gives us an idea of where disruption may be occurring in your body and there's Correlative evidence between, for example, stuff that occurs in the center of the dry blood drop being related to your colon, your abdomen, your abdominal areas, and things that are more peripheral in the ring being more to do with the periphery of your body, the hands, feet, the skin. Yep. And so is that one off? Or would you recommend people come to see you? Is it an ongoing thing? Or not to lead you? Yeah, but, um, how <laughs> You've got to come every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I, do, do you know what? It just varies from person to person. I, I mean, some people, that they want it every five minutes if you could yeah, do it for yeah. them. It, it, and, and, you know, sometimes if you've got a serious health challenge, you, you, you want to start seeing some shifts. And so, you know, I mean, I've got somebody at the moment has been coming to see me every two to three weeks. And, yeah. and, and that, do you know what? In a way, that's almost too often for yeah. blood testing because the shifts are going to be a little bit slower than that. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, you know... Certainly, over a, you know, after two months, you'd expect to see some kind of shift and a change. But in the in the interim period, you, I mean, I've got people who just come and they have, you know, just a motivational chat, you know, and, and, a, and a clarifying chat. And you know, you you alluded to kind of coming off, going off the rails, you know, and getting dissuaded. You know, well, sometimes, you know, it's relatively inexpensive. Just come, forty five minutes. Uh, just sit. Where are you at? You know, what are the challenges you're facing? What are you confused about? Um, and then, and then in the fullness of time, you know, another test. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, so in the live blood, because I've obviously had live blood, my blood looks at a number of times over the years, um, you do see some interesting bits and pieces floating around in there. Thankfully, my blood is reasonably nice and clean. Mm -hmm. um, what sorts of things, for, for the people that are watching now, what sort of things do you see in the blood and what could that mean? Mm -hmm. um, if, if you see something, what could that you know, be alluding to? Well, I, I think that the first thing is, effect, is affected by the pH. So, so if, you know, if, if your blood is slightly acidic, then, then one of the primary things you're going to you're likely to see is, is that your blood, red blood cells are sticking together because red blood cells have an, a negative charge around them and they should just repel each other. But if the fluid becomes slightly acidic, they're going to start to sort of you know, stack up on each other. And if, you, and if your blood is doing that, then it becomes more difficult for it to pass through capillaries and, yeah. and, and you know, just move through your body. And then it's more difficult for it to do its jobs like you know, delivering oxygen and removing waste products. Um, and uh, that, um, 
that means that uh, if your blood looks like that, you might be lacking in energy, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and you may have other health challenges as well. So um, that, that's kind of probably the most immediate thing, but there are also other signs that, that reflect imbalances in pH, and, but there are also, you know, um, if forms and crystals start to occur, then that would suggest that your filtration, you know, that, that your elimination organs might not be working as effectively as they might. So, you know, if you see crystals, that can suggest that, you know, your kidneys are under-functioning, but it can also mean that you're just not hydrating yourself enough yeah. with, with alkaline fluids. Um, and the nature, the colour and shape of the crystals tells you uh, different things. I mean, white crystals quite often are associated with sugars, um, bluey crystals with dairy product consumption, um, and then the darker yellowy ones um, with sort of meat uh, consumption and the acids from meat. You know, all of these things, the body has the facilities to clear them, but if, if you overload your body's ability to do that, that that's when you, you can start to experience health challenges. So, uh, um, but the other, you know, you, you do also see forms in the blood as well, where, where sort of garbage is agglomerated together, where, where your body's janitorial system is just overwhelmed. And so, so in order to preserve you, I mean, your body's highly, highly intelligent. It's always going to do smart things to kind of keep you going, mm -hmm. and it'll just clump this garbage together so that it's not just swimming backwards and yeah, forwards yeah. in your blood. Okay, um, and quite often you see misshapen blood cells. Mm. What can that be an indication of? Well, usually the pH, um, because because that microelectronic form, the charge is what keeps it round. So so if it's okay. you know starting to break down or, or it's got kind of thorns sticking out of it or things like that, then usually again that's just acidity. But but also. That that can reflect digestive dysfunction, and and it, again, you know, it's it's not the way conventionally that, that these things are seen. But but Dr. Young's view, and I, and I absolutely concur with him, is is that, that that you know, blood is made in the gut. So if you've got bowel dysfunction, you know, at some level, then your red blood cells are going to start becoming misshapen because this is where they're being made. Or, or you know, if you don't agree with that, then then this has a huge influence over that blood. Yeah. But, but I would say that's where it's being made. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, we obviously um, recommend you very, very highly. We think Gareth's probably the most, um, in our opinion, the most experienced um, blood microscopist operating in the UK at the moment and, and certainly the most qualified. Um, there's going to be a lot of people watching this uh, from outside of the UK who aren't going to be able to fly into London for a consultation with you. Mm. For people looking in their own locality, what should they be looking for when they when they try and find a microscopist? Well, I, I think I mean again, maybe it's the obvious, but but you, you want to get on the phone with them before you go anywhere near a consultation and and check that you get some sense of rapport with with that person. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how good they are if they're not can't connect with you, then you know, yeah, maybe they can show you your blood, but but. A pretty important part of the consultation is is the interaction and, and the dynamic. You know, you can look at your blood and go, doesn't look so good. But but the crucial part is the action that you're going to take to, to address that. And you, yeah. and you know, you want somebody, you need to have somebody who's going to be able to motivate you, engage with you, connect with you. You know, know know what the challenges you're likely to face are, and and you know how you're going to overcome them, and sort of kind of be with you psychologically and and help you to move forward so I think that's pretty important mm -hmm. I think I think you uh, this is my personal view that, that you want to make sure that they're going to focus on food and diet I mean you know if somebody's going to just give you a rucksack full of pills and potions you I wouldn't want to go there really you know you, you want somebody who's really going to talk you through the dietary aspect and then use the supplements in order to support that um, and I think, you know, so, somebody who's, you know, who, who's got experience, who, you know, is doing it themselves, I mean, um, but yeah, there, there, there are lots of really great microscopists, you know, in, in the States, and I, I don't know elsewhere in the world, but, yeah. but 
I'm, all right, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I went to have my blood red when I was last in Thailand at a retreat out in Thailand, mm. and everything you said that you should look out for are all the things that were missing in that, and it wasn't a good experience at all, and became very, very clear quite quickly to me that having my blood red was a means for them to sell me other services, such as acupuncture and massage and things like that. Very sure you can pound. So that is a very important thing to note. Make sure that the microscopist is actually really, really believing in what they do from a nutritional point of view, as opposed to an upsell to other services, I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let's get this wrapped up. Your final three things, Gareth's top three tips for someone who wants to start living a healthier life today. What should they do? Right, sunshine. Get out in the sun. Get you know that that's the your life force. That that will feed your body, your cells. You know, so if you're sitting at your computer watching this, schedule on your Outlook sunshine time. You know, and put it on recurrence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then move off. No, no. Uh, when it's winter, no. I mean, you, even in the winter, you, you want you want to get out and get. You know, it, it, the, 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 it has an effect on your eyes. It stimulates your immune system. Apparently, um, you know, particularly in winter, you need to get out. Fresh air, sunlight, absolutely primary. Okay. Uh, number two, I'd say drink your greens. Actually, you know, just just if you're craving chocolate, if you want a cigarette.